Good morning. My name is Tom. I come to you from the rustic log cabin in northern Maine. Welcome to my woodshed this morning. Today I want to talk about purchasing a cabin. In my comments I hear a, a lot of people talking about cabins and cabin repairs and all of that. And as I look at my videos, I see that these, these kind of videos uh, uh, really have a lot of interest. Just for a little background before we get into this topic, I am a retired builder here in the state of Maine. I worked on cabins and building cabins uh, my entire career of uh, being a builder. One of the reasons is because there's so many lakes in this state and so many cabins. <laughs> so, uh, where I live, within 10 to 15 minutes of my driveway is at least a dozen lakes. At least. And, and, and that's not even me taking the time to count them. And most lakes here in the state of Maine have got quite a few cabins on them, whether they are remote cabins or a lot of cabins on a camp road, or it doesn't matter, but there's a lot of cabins and a lot of cabin work. So I went after that cabin work uh, approximately 35 years ago, give or take. Probably a little more than 35 years ago. But anyways, I retired out of it. And uh, now I work on my project. You'll see in my videos here. I, I have a lot of building, little stuff. I like to build fish houses now. I like to build cabins, my own small cabins. So you'll find some videos in there about the new cabin we just built. As well as cabin maintenance at the rustic log cabin and I also built a small cabin up there for my daughter's family so you know I'm I'm retired but I still work on my own projects but anyways uh, through the comments and through you guys uh, interest in the channel I can see some interest on, on this topic so today we'll start out with uh, purchasing a cabin and, and maybe I, I think I'm gonna make this somewhat of a series it won't be every week that a video like this will come out but I'll definitely number them number one number two and all that and as we go on maybe at the end I can uh, try to share as much as I know about cabin cabin life cabin experience and mainly purchasing a cabin so I can only speak about the state of Maine I, I can't speak about other states and stuff like that so my knowledge is limited to northern Maine primarily Western Maine, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, when you first go, it depends on what you're looking for for a cabin. My idea of a cabin and other people's is a, a big difference. Uh, my cabins that I've always owned is one-room cabin, small, easy to heat. That's my thing about any cabins. I've, like I said, worked on many. And to me, most of the cabins that people call cabins are homes or at least big as my home so I don't really consider a, a cabin that is a home a cabin but it still falls in this same category but I'm gonna talk about the small hunting cabin the trappers cabin uh, your first cabin you know you're you're 20 years old or you're 40 years old or even 60 years old or, or older I I've got viewers that are, are well into their 70s and just built or purchased a cabin so I hope all this will will help you but anyways you know when you first go look at it make sure to look at a lot of cabins when you're when you're out there you know take your time because there's there is a lot of cabins for sale in the state of Maine or there's lots of lots and lots of locations that you can also uh, uh, pick up some great ideas or pick up a great lot for a good price that's what I've managed to do a, a couple of times over the years here in the state. If you would be interesting in donating to help support the, the message that this channel is putting out there as far as bringing hunting and fishing to life for everyone, the great experience of the great outdoors, check me out on the Patreon uh, link above my head. And for $5 a month, you can be a big supporter of this channel. And I thank you ahead of time, and I will see you in the video. Uh, some of the places that are real expensive in the state it would be the Moosehead Lake area, 
uh, western Maine area, Rangeley Lakes area, uh, down on the coast. Uh, some of that, you know, when you start getting into that property and those cabins, now you're going to start getting pricey. But there's lots of small towns and villages in Maine that the price of land is still very reasonable. The price of a small cottage or a small cabin is still extremely reasonable. Uh, when I'm talking that, I'm talking uh, anything under 20000 Uh You could purchase land, building, driveways. Uh, and, and the list just goes on and on with just a little bit of homework. Uh, when I bought my cabin, I bought it 12 years ago. It sits on three and a half acres of property. My, you see the log cabin in my videos. It is 15 feet by uh, 18 feet. When I purchased it, it was setting flat on the ground. It had, it had fallen off its, its uh, postings. Uh, but being a builder and being a guy that jacked up cabins uh, for, for 40 years, none of that was an issue for me. All I was concerned about was rot. Uh, rotten sills, rotten timbers. Uh, depending on what kind of ground the buildings are setting on, if they're setting flat on the ground, will depend on how much rot you have. So when I first saw the cabin, that's what I wanted to check out. We knew it was setting on the ground, so I crawled under it and uh, was basically just looking at the outside sills. And absolutely none of the sills were rotten at all whatsoever. It, what it, it was setting on gravel, and if it's going to set on something, gravel is the best. So, uh, like I said, this had no rot at all whatsoever. So what I did with my cabin was I have some jacks, they're big jacks, and they're buried in snow right now. But uh, maybe in the summertime, I'll I'll give you a peek at these these house jacks. They're specifically built for raising and jacking up cabins, stuff like that. So, anyways, we jacked up my cabin. Uh, four feet, I put in six by six pressure treated sills down it. Then I set it on some six by six post, which is setting on top of a 24 inch round cement pad. And it's been sitting that way for 12 years. I had to build a new set of stairs for it uh, because the stairs that it did have were, were uh, basically garbage. But when I looked at the cabin, I knew what it, I knew it's what I wanted. Number one, that's why I'm kind of doing this is I like buildings that set up on top of a hill because of drainage. Uh, some cabins are setting down in lowlands and drainage is always going to be an issue. When you're down close to the water, drainage is going to be an issue. When you've got uh, camp lots, it's called the water level. So when you're purchasing your cabin for the first time and you want lakefront property or you want something like that, keep, the, keep that in mind, uh, the water table. Because if that water table comes under the lawn or leads out to the lake and it's under your cabin, that particular cabin is always going to have problems. I have literally had cabins that you dug down with one shovel, one shovel full of dirt and was right into the water table, which is the level of the, <laughs> of the lake. Uh, it's just, you know, so it's almost impossible to keep a cabin like that level without going out of whack. So when you're looking at your buildings, keep that in mind uh, as you travel the state looking for these buildings. If you can find one, uh, like a lakefront that comes up on a little bit of a hill, that's great. It helps your view, and it also helps with that cabin for long-term use that it's going to be setting on uh, good pylons, good pads, and not move all around for you. Uh, so that's uh, this will probably wrap up this video this week on uh, looking at your first cabin, stuff like that.